A different month, a different fat loss sprint, and I am back on 1,000 calories per day, at least for the meantime. For now, we're gonna make breakfast, but I will go over everything since my last fat loss sprint and what I'm doing currently, but it's time to eat. We are going to take it back to peak Greg Doucette, and just because we have 1,000 calories doesn't mean we can't have French toast because of the kind of bread they started making. Now, this bread was incredibly expensive, but I wanted to let you know my thoughts. This is Thin Slim Foods. This costed $9 for the loaf, and it has 45 calories per serving, which is almost close to a lot of, if not the same as, other 45 calorie breads that don't have all this fiber in it. But because it has all this fiber, it also has seven grams of protein, and it's very hard to get your protein in when you only have a thousand calories. So with the seven grams of protein, I'm gonna have four slices. That's 28 grams of protein just from the bread itself. And one of these days, I'm gonna figure this out. This is made with oat fiber and vital wheat gluten, and if you've watched any of my pizza recipes, you know that I love this stuff. So I'm gonna figure this out one day where this is like a quarter of the price to make. But for now, we are going to use this in our French toast. It is shelf stable until the package date, which is April 14th of next year. Holy shit. Once opened, two weeks in the fridge or you must freeze. I'm gonna take a bite of one of these just to see how this tastes. Pretty dry, not much flavor. I'm probably gonna choke here in a second, but we have to make do with what we have here. And I'm still exploring Austin. I just moved to Austin and I'm trying to figure out where the good grocery stores are that have the lower calorie food or more low calorie options. So if you live in Austin, let me know where I can find some of this stuff. But this was the only low calorie bread at HEB. So this is what we're gonna work with. All right, and to our bowl, I'm gonna add four egg whites. This bread definitely needs a boost in flavor. So I'm going to add probably about 25 grams of Swerve or Pure Cane today because this is the cheaper brand this time around, just to make it as sweet as possible and really take my mind off the fact that that tastes like nothing. And then I'm gonna add a light squeeze of vanilla extract and a gram or two of cinnamon. And by the way, last time I was super stringent on like every single calorie, this time I'm gonna make sure that I still get about a thousand calories but I'm not going to add every little single thing like cinnamon or vanilla extract or like a one second spray of oil. If I end up eating 1100 calories, that's fine. If I end up with 1050, that's fine. But I'm gonna add the bigger things. And just a very small pinch of salt. I think it's gonna take a minute for this bread to soak anything up because of what kind of bread that it is. But we'll see what happens. As always, I forgot to get my pan going. I have a nice cast iron that'll most likely fit all four of these pieces of bread because the bread's not that big. So we can make this in one batch. And I'm gonna give this pan a light spray. I think that actually works out though because it's gonna take a minute for these pieces of bread to soak anything up. All right, this didn't do as bad as I thought it would. It only took about three minutes for this to completely soak up the four egg whites. And I'm just gonna put these in the pan to let them start cooking. It may not seem like much, but there is still some egg whites if you use a spatula. So I'm gonna pour the little bit extra right on the top of our bread. They seem to be cooking up pretty well. I just don't wanna burn these things. I already have to work against Flavor Town right now. Yeah, good choice to flip, Nick. I don't know if it's the pan or if it's the new stove top, which I really don't like these kind of stoves, but it is what it is, gotta work with what you got, or if it's the bread, to be honest. But it's definitely cooking unevenly, where like part of it is almost like burnt, and part of it looks almost not cooked yet. This is what the anabolic kitchen is all about, though. Experimenting, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work, and making it better the next time around. All right, so that did take me about 20 minutes to make. I'm sure I would get better at it if uh, I was making French toast again, but it's been a long while since I've made French toast regularly. And it really only was about two dishes, the bowl and the pan, and then there's a couple utensils. So it's a super easy cleanup as well. But you already know that I need to add a sugar-free syrup to this. 
This is the one from like Jewel or Randall's, whatever. Light, sugar-free, 15 calories for two tablespoons. I'm really not super picky about this. I do like Miss Buttersworth the best, but they didn't have it when I went. This was the only one that was available, so I'll take it. Walden Farms works great too, but just pick whichever one you prefer or whichever one is on sale, which is my preference. As I'm doing this, I'm remembering, I like to put a little bit on each level so I don't have to worry about there not being syrup on certain parts. And if you know anything about me, you know I love extra sauce and I love it saucy. So we added a whole bunch of syrup to this, about 60 grams, which is about 30 calories. Speaking of which, let's go over what the calories were for this meal. We sit at 278 calories, 42 protein, 39 carb, which almost all of those carbs are from the oat fiber and don't count as calories, and eight fat. This low calorie meal doesn't really matter though if this doesn't taste good. And I really tried my best to dress up this bread to make it taste the best that it can. When I first took a bite of this, this was like a one or a two. Like I definitely would not purchase again. And now it's like a seven or an eight. And it's very hard to tell that this is even zero carb bread full of protein. So there's definitely ways, vegetables is a great example, in ways you can mask food to make it taste a lot better without really adding many, if any, calories. I'm gonna finish this and I will see you for meal two. First of all, let me tell you that all 28 grams of that fiber has already released from my body. Secondly, I have new lighting and I literally in the last hour or so got a new mic. So let me know what you think of the audio and the visual appearance of the set. I will be messing with this for probably the next 10 to 20 videos, but any input would be great. It is right before the workout, so we need to get everything ready for before and after the workout. First, I'm going to make my pre-workout, which is going to be one scoop of mode, one scoop of nitric, code E4CM, saves you 10% on anything from Gorilla Mine. And then I'm also going to make my protein shake beforehand because as soon as I'm done with my lift and right before I do my cardio, I'm going to eat, <laughs> I guess drink, my protein shake. The last thing I am doing is having some carbs since I really didn't get any for breakfast. And in the last few videos, I've eaten strawberries a lot and watermelons are in season right now. They are everywhere, at least down in Texas. And I figure why not eat some watermelon? Also, someone on Instagram messaged me and reminded me that there is citrulline, which helps with a nice pump at the gym in watermelon. So along with the actual pump ingredients in Gorilla Mines product, I can get a nice little pump and energy from the watermelon as well. And I'm going to have 200 grams, which guesses how many calories? 60, you cannot beat it, but these 60 calories will help out a lot for the workout, so that's what we're gonna eat. This is so juicy, it's unreal. And that is about 200 grams or 60 calories. I'm gonna eat this, head to the gym, and afterwards we will have a nice discussion about what's been going on and what will be going on in the future. For now, it's time to get a lift in. All right, let's make this quick because the Texas heat does not play here and air conditioning being low doesn't work. So as far as my training goes, I am doing the exact same thing I did before. I'll briefly go over it, but if you want a more in-depth that explanation, you should check out the first 1K calorie full day beating that I did. But I'm doing six days a week of lifting, one pure cardio day, and then every day after lifting, I am doing cardio for about 30 to 45 minutes. I am on day four of 1K calories, and I am feeling great. And I am going to do what I said in the last full day of eating that I did, which is the third part. I'm going to do more of a stair step calorie equation here, where one week I'm gonna do 1,000 calories, the next week week I'm gonna do about 1500 and then I'm gonna end it off at probably 1800 so I'm still in a very big calorie deficit but I get more food as each week keeps progressing again hunger has been in check hasn't been a problem and the meals are going good the only time I get hungry just like before is at night and that's why I save my biggest meal for the nighttime however as long as I get my ass out of the kitchen after I eat I'm all good now it's important that we go over what happened from last time 
to this time. As far as the scale goes, I was down an average weight of about five pounds, which is great. I expected to lose around five to six pounds. Some of that's water weight. It definitely wasn't all fat. However, I was extremely happy about it. But what happened in between the day that I stopped, which was a wedding, and then moving up until now, is that I kind of just said, you know what, I'm just gonna eat. I'm not really gonna weigh myself as much. Like I probably weighed myself only four days a week because I was in between moving, all my stuff was packed. I wasn't at home every morning. It was just the last few weeks have been absolutely crazy. So I just said, you know what, I'm gonna eat what I want and not really care. And in between, every fat loss cycle or fat loss sprint that I've done so far, I've gained back about one to two pounds in that time frame, whether it's two weeks or three weeks on break. And I think this time from what my weigh-ins are saying, I did gain back about two to three pounds of that five pounds that I lost. So maybe in reality, I'm only down about a pound from the last fat loss sprint. And to be honest with you, I am not mad about it because it wasn't me gaining weight because I was binging, that I couldn't control myself, that I was constantly hungry, and that I was suffering in any way. I felt fine, I was just eating what I wanted. I moved to a new place, me and my girlfriend were trying a bunch of new food, and we were getting desserts and everything, the full experience of Austin and what they have to offer. And I was also like moving for 10, 12 hours a day, like packing boxes, cleaning the apartment. It was very difficult, so I decided, you know what I'm gonna just let it go and most people that look at the glass half empty would say man you dieted on a thousand calories for 12 days and you gained almost everything back like that's bad when in reality I didn't really suffer and at the same time when you look at the glass half full I would have eaten whatever during that time that I was fat loss sprinting I probably would have gained another one to two pounds during that time and then when I got to Austin I would have probably gained another two or three maybe even four pounds just from the food that I was eating here because I would have done it the exact same way so in reality I would be up five or six pounds right now from where I was at from the last fat loss sprint but actually I'm still down technically whatever two pounds one or two pounds from the last fat loss sprint. Luckily, you don't have to move every three weeks and every three weeks you don't have a wedding, even though I do have a wedding at the end of this next fat loss sprint. But it's not gonna be the same as last time. I'm gonna make sure that I only take one to two weeks off and then I plan for another two to three weeks. And that is where I plan to completely end the fat loss sprints and start bulking for the next four to six months because right now I feel good. By the time I get to that point, I'm gonna be at a weight where I have no problem bulking back up to like 200 pounds or whatever. And then I can do a mini cut or another fat loss cycle at that point, whatever I prefer doing. And again, for me, I'm just an average lifter. I still wanna go out and have alcoholic beverages. I still wanna go out and have meals and have desserts and enjoy time with my girlfriend. And I have a big appetite, so if I only gain one pound in a week I took a three week break so I gained two or three pounds in those three weeks that's a 500 calorie surplus it's really not that much and I enjoyed the shit out of it me and my girlfriend had a great time the entire time and I don't regret it at all so for me I don't really care about the extra time that I'm taking to lose weight because as everyone always says it's a marathon not a sprint would I rather be bulking sooner so I could gain muscle sooner yes but at the same time I'd rather get to my goal of weight loss over extended period of time and then in between those times it's almost like a vacation where I could do whatever I want and then at the end of the vacation I might be up a couple pounds but I'm still a net negative after each fat loss sprint so that's how I look at it fat loss sprints again may not be for everybody but I have really enjoyed the progress that I've seen with it and the sustainability that it's had in my training and lifestyle all right, I'm sweating my ass off. I will see you for meal three. For these dinners, for the 1K full days of eating, I have been trying to do something spontaneous. Today, we are going to be making something that weighs over two pounds. I've never made before. Oven's going off because it's preheated, and it only takes about 20 minutes to make. For our side, I'll be cooking asparagus. For every 100 grams, you only get 
20 calories. So you can have a whole bunch of asparagus for dinner. Today, I will be having almost a whole pound. To make it just a little bit better, we just need a light spray of oil, some salt, of course. Everything is better with garlic, so we're gonna go with some granulated garlic here. And a topping that doesn't need much to be added to add a shit ton of flavor, Parmesan. You heard the oven go off, it is preheated, so I'm gonna throw these in for about 12 minutes and we will prepare our shrimp. I've made asparagus plenty of times, but I've never made this shrimp recipe. I'm gonna try and make like a garlic shrimp in like a butter sauce kind of thing. This is probably the most tedious part of the recipe, but we have to wait for the asparagus to be done anyway, so we might as well get this done while something else is being cooked. I just keep the garbage next to me and throw the de-shelled and de-tailed shrimp into a separate bowl. I've never understood when you go to places and the dish you get comes with the tail on. It's like a pasta dish that's burning hot and to try and get the tail off, you literally have to burn your fingers and it's probably the most unenjoyable thing ever. Doesn't make any sense to me. All right, shrimp are all deshelled. Now we have to dry them. What I'm gonna do is just take them from the bowl now and put them back on the plate where the colander was. All right, now that that's all done, we have to get our shrimp on a pan and season them. What I'm gonna do to make sure that they don't stick is I'm gonna put aluminum foil down and I'm going to spray it very lightly just to get a coating on there. And then just evenly spread your shrimp across. Note to self, about two pounds of shrimp fit onto a half sheet pan. I'm gonna give about four quarter second sprays to the top of these. Of course, we gotta add some salt. I think a little bit of smoked paprika would be great on this. And of course, some freshly cracked pepper. All right, our asparagus should be done. Sizzling hot, looks beautiful. Then we're supposed to broil on high for two minutes. Wish me luck. While that's going, I'm gonna get all my other ingredients ready for our sauce. I have the parsley. I don't have a lemon, so I'm gonna use lime. And then I have fresh garlic I'm gonna crack in there. And then we need 28 grams of butter. Actually, I have to start melting the butter. So I got my pan on top of the oven and I'm just gonna let that melt. Took about four minutes instead of two, but the shrimp are perfectly cooked. I'll tell you what, I've cooked shrimp so many times in the pan itself and it's hard to like cook evenly and make sure you don't overcook some of the shrimp. This was perfect. All I had to do was let that sit in there. I still have to taste it to make sure it's good, but I'm sure it's going to be absolutely delicious. Now that we got our butter all melted in there, I want this parsley, since it's not fresh, to sit in there so it can kind of bloom to bring more flavor out of the dried parsley. And then I'm also gonna crush in about two cloves of garlic. Once you start really smelling that garlic, it's time to add the shrimp and we're there. I'm just gonna mix everything to combine and let all these flavors melt together for about a minute or so. All right, this is the real test here because I had to take a thumbnail, the food got cold, and I had to reheat it for 30 seconds in the microwave. So if this is still bomb as shit, you know that it's definitely worth making. We'll start with the asparagus. I know this is gonna be good. I've cooked asparagus probably a hundred times in my life and it always ends up really, really good unless you undercook it or overcook it. I mean, for the calories that this costs you with the flavor pairings that also cost essentially no calories. Asparagus is just a no-brainer. You add 20 calories of Parmesan, salt, garlic powder, and you cook it for a little bit, and it's literally, especially when you just look at the plate, like a gourmet meal or a gourmet side dish, whatever. Yeah, so good. Okay, the shrimp are perfectly cooked. I will tell you right now, I am probably never, and I mean, never going to make shrimp any other way but with the broiler setting on the oven. It's cooked perfectly. I didn't really have to worry about it. It only takes a few minutes to make. You don't have to think about some being cooked, some being undercooked, some being overcooked. You just throw it in there and you take it out. Simple as that. You get the richness of the butter, a little bit of the parsley, a nice hit of garlic, which is exactly what I want. And really, besides this being on a bed of pasta, I really couldn't ask for anything more. And I'll tell you this right now, you make this for your girl or your man, you are definitely going to get laid. This is a exquisite looking dish, exquisite tasting dish, 
And I would give the shrimp on its own a 9.2 out of 10. It's so damn good and it literally came together so damn quick. Let's go over the calories. For this entire dish, we are looking at 522 calories, 71 protein, 16 carb, and 17 fat. For almost damn near two pounds of food, that is unbelievable, especially when we have real butter, we have mounds of shrimp, we have a damn mountain of asparagus, Parmesan, all real ingredients, all some or some higher calorie ingredients, and just a combination of flavors that fit together perfectly. This is well worth it. I highly recommend you make this meal. And on the day, we are looking at 1,010 calories, 145 protein, 74 carb, and 28 fat. With 1,000 calories, that's about the best I could do, especially in the protein department and the fat department. And honestly, my calories with all the little stuff in between, sprays of uh, olive oil and whatever else, I'm probably more near 1,100 calories. But at the end of the day, that's an absolute win. If you haven't checked out any of my other full days of eating, especially for the 1000 calories, I definitely think you should. I make completely different meals in those. And until next time, deuces.